Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with host Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find a tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with hosts Jimmy Hinton and Jimmy's mom, Clara. Well, we have a hot topic today. We um, do. Yeah. Um, Thank you for tuning in, and uh, as always, thank you to our patrons who support us and help make this podcast happen. Um, If you would like to check out what Patreon is all about and how to become a patron, check out uh, patreon.com slash speaking out, and you'll land on our page and learn all about it. Um, Okay, inmates being released into the public quietly... Uh, as COVID rages on, this is an interesting phenomenon, and mm-hmm. I don't think there's nearly as much media uh, coverage and public outrage as there should be. There's not, because it's kept quiet. It's interesting yep. how um, the media preys on certain things, and this is not one of them. Yeah, the big focus, of course, is uh, the political campaigning that's mm-hmm. going on, uh, Trump versus Biden, and of course, everything, all the toxic stuff that goes with uh, reporting on that, but also um, the violence that's happening right now across the country, that's getting a lot of media coverage. What's unfortunately not getting coverage is uh, all the inmates that are being dumped into our streets. And we want to emphasize the inconsistency uh, with these policies. And quite frankly, I think that some of these judges that are doing this uh, against the good advice of a lot of district attorneys. Um, a lot of people are being blindsided by this and judges are just releasing them like crazy. Uh, I think some of those judges ought to be sitting in prison to be quite honest. Um, so the question is how many inmates are being released in the United States? Well, the short answer is nobody knows. Right. Nobody has a clue. Um, we know that in California, 17,000 600 inmates have been released just in California. That's a city. Yeah. That's a absolutely city full of people. Yeah. When you think about it, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of other states are following suit. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how many. I tried to look it up and guess what I found? I can't find Crickets. It. Yeah. Right. Um, we know when it's happening, when somebody gets released from prison and they murder somebody, um, then all of a sudden the media takes that up for a short time and then it just kind of dissolves you know again. What? I was going to say it's not even making page one. Mm-hmm. I'm finding no. it uh, further back in the newspaper. And it's like, oh, by the way, this person was a an inmate and they got out and did this. Yeah. So it's not even making big, big headlines. I've seen articles where uh, officials will come out and they'll say, well, you know, we're we're re- releasing nonviolent offenders mm-hmm. only. And these are people who, you know, they were slated to be, uh, to be up for parole or release within like eight to 12 months right. anyway. Right. And there are no, um, no violent offenders are being released, et cetera, et cetera. When I first heard that, um, I thought people need to be calling the bluff because this just isn't true. It can't mm-hmm. be true because I know how politics works. Um, I've worked with politicians. Um, You and I have been to Harrisburg Mm -hmm. how many times? We know Mm -hmm. how shady and slimy politics are and how dishonest, incredibly dishonest politics are. Uh, This whole thing is really messed up, Jimmy, really, really messed up. Um, And in a judge's eyes, what might be termed nonviolent or ready to be released is not in fact, always true because working within the prison system, I've seen what has to happen before a person is actually paroled. 
And a lot of times they're parole, you know, they have to go back before the parole board two, three, four times. Mm -hmm. Especially sex offenders. Uh, Yes, absolutely. And now all of a sudden these are nonviolent people and they're just spewing them on the streets. Yeah. Well, the dirty little secret is they're not nonviolent people. Right. Um, California notoriously released violent offenders. In fact, uh, I'll pull up an article right here and show you guys. Um, let's see. Here we go. California. Uh, amid COVID-19, California releases some inmates doing time for murder. Advocates push to free more. This is what blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Is it, that it's... people are, are shouting You know, it's unfair that people are in prisons and they're advocating for the release, not of nonviolent offenders, but of violent offenders. Um, This is happening right now. Uh, Here's a story. You know, I'll read a little bit of this, but just to highlight some of the points. Uh, Tariba Williams was 22 when she shot her boyfriend, drove 750 miles with him, bleeding in the trunk of his own car, and then dragged him into a northern California motel tied him to a chair and left him to die. He wasn't even dead yet. I 750 I, I'm shaking, miles. shaking my head because I think we live in a time where so much is changing, whereas anything goes and it's all about don't punish the person too much. This is awful to do to them. I mean, after all, I'm seeing where the convicted of murder, she gets a college degree after mm-hmm. 19 years in prison. Who cares? Look at the violent murder she carried out. Her sentence was in place for a reason. Um, Do we just suddenly extend all mercy and say? Well, apparently we do, which which is not legal uh, as far as I know. I'm not an attorney. Don't pretend to be one. But um, doing these early releases just for the sake of it is insanity. Um, This spring, the state expedited the release of 3,500 inmates um, because of the coronavirus. And in July, it freed 2,345 others early. Thousands more eligible for release, including at least 6,500 deemed to be high risk because of medical conditions that make them especially vulnerable to COVID-19. So in other words, as long as you're vulnerable to COVID-19, um, your, your crime doesn't really matter. If you as an inmate are vulnerable to getting sick from COVID-19, we're going to release you. Those are the terms, period. Um, here it goes on. It okay. still talks about Williams. Um, Williams, 44, walked out of a women's prison in uh, Chow- Chilla. Chowchilla, California on July 29th, lopping decades off her 84-year-to-life sentence for killing. Where's the justice in this? It, it's a mockery right now. This, this is a mockery of our legal system right now. And some people may say, well, you don't want COVID-19 sweeping through the prison. Do you, how about isolating these people like, right. like's being done? Put them in a separate wing of the Put prison. Put them in a separate wing, keep them isolated yeah. if they're high risk. And they do have uh, ways of doing that mm-hmm. rather than why would you release them among the public if they're high risk and they catch this, they're going to spread it to others anyway, yeah. who did not in any way, shape or form deserve to be, um, you know, inflicted with this COVID. Not saying that they do, but put them in isolation. Right. That's not so hard to do. We didn't release all of our people from nursing homes. Right. Exactly right. We sure didn't. Sure unless you're did. unless you're Pennsylvania's health secretary right. who removed and then, who removed right. her mother from a nursing Special home. Special privilege, you're right. As they were yes. dumping COVID positive yes. patients into, into nursing, homes. nursing homes. Right. Yeah. The uh, double standard. I mean, me it's, it's unbelievable. It may, yeah, it is. Um, okay, this paragraph, but in Williams' case and in others, officials have drawn the ire of prosecutors, victims' rights advocates, and family members amid questions about which and how many inmates are being released and whether it's being done with enough transparency to protect the public. It's not. Mm -hmm. That's why these people are upset. That's why they're drawing Mm -hmm. ire. Okay, so, um, I mean, this is happening all over the place. Um, How about this one that was in the news just this past week? Carla uh, 
Dominguez uh, was murdered by her rapist, alleged rapist, immediately after he was released in a Virginia uh, prison on $25,000 bond, Alexandria, Virginia. Um, That's our neighbor, pretty much. Yeah, 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 not far down the road. Mm -mm. Uh, I'll pull this article up as well. Um, So here we go. Um, Girl slaughtered after her alleged rapist was released from jail over COVID concerns. An alleged rapist killed his accuser after being released from jail over concerns he and his lawyers he and his lawyers would contract the coronavirus. So in other words, the attorneys were saying, well, it's putting us at high risk when we go into the prison to sit with our client, we could be exposed to coronavirus. And you know what? This, uh, I should, I, I should be care- I'm trying head. to hold my tongue back. I, the, yeah. the fill in the blank judge mm-hmm. granted this mm-hmm. and did it I... secretly. This was like a secret backdoor deal. According to the Washington Post, um, Abraham, uh, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Fuachi. Fuachi haunted and killed, yeah. hunted and killed his accuser, Carla Dominguez, uh, after being released from jail because of concerns the Wuhan coronavirus would put him and his lawyers at risk of falling ill. He was indicted on charges of rape, strangulation, and abduction after... Dominguez, a native of Venezuela, told law enforcement in Alexandria, Virginia, that he sexually assaulted her in October. I really believe that whoever released him should be held accountable. I think I think whoever should, released him should be in prison. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Should be held accountable. This is not acceptable at all. So 11 not days after his indictment, um, this this guy, uh, Bauchi, turned himself into authorities and a judge ordered him to be held without bond. Would you say he's he was a little high risk? A little bit. Um, his, his lawyers requested bond, arguing their client would not be safe from the Wuhan virus because it was impossible to provide adequate social distancing and other safety measures behind bars. Um, this is insane. This is insane. And what 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 happens, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, is that this makes the biggest mockery of justice to the victims. It does. Think about her family. Think about her parents, her brothers, her sisters, her I aunts would and be uncles. So outraged um, at our legal system, I would be spitting fire and nails. I really would. But that still wouldn't bring her back. No. It is just so wrong. And this is happening in droves all over the place. So here's another article. This uh, this is the last article we're going to show. But as a result of this death in Virginia, they started looking into it. So uh, here we go. Look, hmm, what do you know? No system tracking inmates released because of COVID-19 in Northern Virginia, Fox 5 learns. Oh, wow. Shocker. This is... I'm shocked. (laughs) I'm sitting here in shock right now. You mean there's no system to track them once they dump them out into Mm -hmm. the streets? Just leave. Because the poor little people might get COVID. Leave. Yep. Go find a nice cozy place. Right. Uh, Reaction tonight after Fox 5 has learned in Northern Virginia, specifically Alexandria City, that's where this murder Mm -hmm. took place. There's no system in place to track which inmates have been released due to concerns surrounding the coronavirus transmission. That's awful comforting for the families of the victims, for the victims and their family members. All these people who sexually harass, who stalk, who um, who are domestic abusers. Number one, I find it hard to believe there's no way of tracking them. Did they There just, is a way. They're just not doing right. it. They're just not doing it because they don't want to. They didn't just release people and all of their records suddenly disappeared. On those records are all kinds of notations. Mm-hmm. You know that this private stuff is confidential. Uh, when they're up for parole, how many times they went for parole. You don't just release that, release them, and then you can't track them. You can't tell who was released because of COVID. Right? No way. Right. Wait and lie. And, right and there. what's what's infuriating about this is that this poor woman never stood a chance to live. No, she, she never. Didn't, she didn't even know this guy was out. It's awful. It's terrible. She didn't stand a chance. It's, no. He hunted her down. 
and murdered her. This is the same jurisdiction going on in this article. The same jurisdiction where a young woman was murdered by a man accused of raping her. That man was released due to COVID-19 after being previously held without bond. By the way, people people are going to jail for opening their businesses and trying to feed their families. Mm -hmm. I know. Those people are going to jail. While tens of thousands of people are being released. There were over 400 businesses that received citations over the weekend in the state of Pennsylvania mm-hmm. for not adhering to our governor's social distancing Yeah, they're being fined. Law. They're having yeah. liquor licenses it's, revoked. Right. They're being put it in jail. ridiculous. And then we see stuff like this. It's insane. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Uh, without commenting on any specific case, a spokesperson for Alexandria says, ultimately, when it comes to jail releases, because of COVID-19, That's because of COVID-19 specifically. Point one, the judge decides on a case-by-case basis. So the judge decides, not the district attorney, not prosecuting attorneys, not law enforcement. A judge decides I'm kind of laughing, Jimmy, because when I was teaching in the prison last year, I would watch guys when they wanted to get out of class. They were great fakers. Mm -hmm. They felt faint. Yeah, They felt dehydrated because mm-hmm. of the heat. They needed out. They wanted to go to the nurse's office, like like little school kids would do. Yeah. Like, and if they faked it, said, oh, you know, I'm feeling all these symptoms, they have ways to look everything up uh, yeah. in prison. All they have to do is come up with three things, and they're out. I'm yeah. sure they're out. Absolutely. They didn't want them in there. Yeah. Get out. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help when you have the attorneys being crybabies too. No. no, we might get we might get sick too. You're putting us at risk. And then a judge falls for it, and they're releasing these violent inmates. Uh, here's another point in Alexandria: no one is officially notating which inmates are being released based on COVID nineteen risks. So not only are they dumping them out in the street, there's no way to track them. Mm-hmm. There's no way to tell which which ones are violent and nonviolent. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to this. They literally just release them Again, quietly lie, 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 into the lie, streets. Lie because when thousands are being released, it's not like 10 people. Mm-hmm. It's We're talking many yeah. are being released from the prisons. Suddenly you see a whole cell, uh, an area that's empty. You don't know what's going on. And don't think the other inmates in <clears throat> that prison don't know too. And the other inmates know what's going and on. And that... that amps up their request Wait. to get released. Oh, now all of a sudden anger, everybody's high risk in anger, the prison. Outrage, the whole thing. If he got out, then why am I not getting out? What did they do to get out? I want to do it. The whole thing. It's a spiral. It's a nasty it's awful. big spiral. Yeah. Uh, the last point here that this official make th- this spokesperson made. Uh, and furthermore, there's no requirement mandating inmate releases be classified as a release due to the coronavirus. The city says the only way to know if somebody was released due to the coronavirus virus pandemic would be to read the transcript of any bond hearing, which still would not have to include the premise of the release. So even if you can get a hold of the the, right. the actual bond release, even then they're saying, but it doesn't matter. You read it all day long. They don't have to state the reason why they Does were bonded out. Does this make out. you think maybe there's a lot of crooked stuff going on right now? Maybe. Oh, absolutely. But also what it makes me think is that there are people like my dad who is a lifer Mm -hmm. who may one day knock on my door. I was, I fear that. I do too. It can happen. It is happening. And he, by his own admission in letter after letter after letter to you says, if I get out, I'll just go back and do the same thing I was doing Mm -hmm. before. Absolutely. He He told me before, if I got released tomorrow, I would abuse another kid tomorrow. Yes. He told me that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And these are the people being released. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a couple of the, a couple of points that we have, you know, there are a lot of people in, in prison that don't see pedophiles as violent. They see them as nonviolent because they think violent offender is somebody who, you know, beats and murders and, right. you know, uses up baseball a bats. A knife right. And something like Some that. Some sort of weapon. Um, but the state classifies violent offenders. Uh, in fact, my own father, he's an SVP, sexually violent predator. Um, mm-hmm. He's sexually violent because he hunts people. Right. Uh, it's not that he's physically violent. It's that he's sexually violent. Um, and people don't realize that 
these designations the are really important. The harm that has been done. What's interesting, Jimmy, is while in prison, you know it, I know it, he's made wonderful friends among the CEOs. And, yeah, I was going to say, uh, they, including they the staff. They like him. They love him. Because he's just this wonderful, calm-natured person. He's the model inmate. Model. and he So guess who be, the first people to be released are? Right. It's the sex offenders. Well, absolutely. Because of this. Yeah. Because if of good you behavior. Look at him and and a whole bunch like him, they're not going to appear to be violent in the terms that we think of violence. Right. Not at all. Yeah, it's it's insane. So what what does the release of these um, molesters and other people? You know, this guy, uh, the guy who killed this poor woman, um, you know, young, pretty lady too. Um, he he took her life away just a few days ago. Right. Um, what does this mean? The release of the, the child molesters, the violent inmates, what does that mean to those who've been abused? Well, a whole number of things. Um, fear, uh, recurring nightmares, uh, PTSD. Well, just like you said, you you fear that one day you're going to wake up and, and see your dad knocking at your door. Yeah. What happens then? What, what happened? Oh, I, I don't worry about myself. I know what would happen but really I'm quickly and it wouldn't children, be a pretty scene. But yeah, his yeah. victims... His victims, um, or what the victims if they of any see of these him, people? they have a little bit of peace knowing that he's locked away right? That's, where he can't harm that's anybody That's why it's called else. justice. Yes, absolutely. But when these people, and I will call them wolves, as we talked about last week, are released, they have not changed. Mm -mm. A violent not at all. person, a violent sex offender is always a violent sex offender. Yeah. So, you know, it, like we said, it, it, it's uh, um, justice is being thwarted uh, because these poor people might get sick. It's not that they aren't. That's what's frustrating, too. It's not that they're sick. It's not that they've tested positive for COVID. It's not that there's a really high risk that they will get COVID. It's that they could get COVID. I'll tell you what I and think And that's is what's infuriating. In the prisons, because having been in for... Uh, almost 15 years in and out of the prison. They whine, they cry, they demand, they mm -hmm. make on, you would not believe the demands that are made every single yep. day. CEOs are afraid for their own lives, not yeah. because of COVID, but for physical violence. If enough of these guys get riled up, they would stir things up and, and cause a big fight to yeah. break out. And I think the CEOs are just afraid and just figure, let them out. Let mm -hmm. them get rid of them. Get rid of yeah. them. Get them out of our hair. We don't want to see them. We don't want to deal with it. You know, it's interesting, too. I have friends um, who are corrections officers, um, and exactly zero of them are actually afraid of contacting or contracting the coronavirus. Right. None of them. And so this right. this whole no, I think this whole notion spiff, that, that this mm -hmm. is terrible and it's you know no. it's it's sweeping the prisons and uh, my goodness it's it's this uh, epicenter of COVID I've not seen any evidence to that to that effect at least in our area we have two um, large prisons I haven't yeah heard two of massive anything, prisons in, anything not at all not prisons. a whisper not in our town word. I mean two I can see large prisons I can yeah. almost see. Uh, the SCI Laurel Highlands, oh, where Jerry yeah. Sandusky is. Right. Jerry Sandusky is it every day two tour. miles from yeah. from right where we're sitting right mm -hmm. now. Jerry Sandusky's right. in one of our state prisons in town, two mm -hmm. miles away. There's another state prison in Somerset mm -hmm. that you can see from uh, the one right prison. From there. You can yeah. you can see mm -hmm. the prisons from right. the other. You're talking. And six, they are full. What is it about six thousand inmates? Oh yeah. The, the whole population of our town yes is in two state prisons in our town yes absolutely and you're exactly right not, not one case one case of coronavirus not but i'll bet one. you i'll bet you if we call the prisons and ask them if they've released inmates i'll guarantee you they know released they have i hundreds of them i know why i mean i i know they have i'll yeah. just leave it at that okay <laughs> i'll take your word for it i know i know they have so uh, you know what does this mean for the innocent you know, these the, the early release means um, one thing to the abuser. They can go right back to it. They know they're not being tracked. It's not a secret. Mm -hmm. In fact, 
um, I have a very good friend uh, who sits on the parole board uh, at a state mm -hmm. prison. And he said, I asked him specifically, I said, what happens to inmates once they're paroled or once they're on probation uh, or if they bond out or whatever, what happens to, to that inmate? He laughed mm -hmm. and he said, your guess is as good as mine, buddy. Well, I'm like, you... don't, don't they have, don't they have officers that they have to answer to POs that they have POs that they have to answer to. And he, he said, those people out in the field, he said, I used to be out in the field. I used to be a, mm -hmm. a probation officer mm -hmm. out, out there outside of the prison walls. And he said, I'm telling you, I did the bare minimum because these guys, especially the sex offenders didn't give me any trouble. And he said, so as long as they didn't give me trouble, I wasn't going to invade their privacy and come into their home and, you know, be a jerk to them. If exactly. they were being nice to me, I was cool with them. And he said, now that I know about sex offenders, he's, he said, I, I would do things completely differently, completely differently. Well, but he's right. like, I was green back then. Right now, this is a haven of wonderfulness for these offenders because yeah. things are running at such a slow pace. A lot of people are laid off yet. They including our court systems. Yes. And things are not running at full tilt. These offenders know it. Yeah. I have an, uh, know an offender who said to me, my parole officer doesn't even want to hear from me. Yeah. He said, shoot me. Uh, a he I said, I, I want to try. That I, I want to travel out of state. Am I going to get in trouble? He said, I don't, I won't even know about it. He said, shoot me a text mm -hmm. and just say, Hey, I'm okay. That's good enough for me. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it. That is frightening. That it, is not acceptable. It, That's what's going on. What's frustrating about that too is, you know, I know from talking to my friends in prison, what the procedure is to be able to go out of state. It is a lengthy, it massive is. approval and process just across state lines. Me, yeah, I'm shoot going. me a text. In fact, he's going this weekend. Yeah. And his parole officer, he contacted him. And the guy says, just shoot me a text and just yeah. say I'm okay. Yeah. That's it. I don't want to hear if you're out of state. Um, you know, here's another point we have. Children become the target of the abuser once again. Yeah. Uh, only now the abuser has a, a very real high because guess oh, where he should be? Right. And he knows that. And and he knows it. And now look at this. And now he knows now. I went before a judge. Man. And these judges in, in the offender's mind, these judges are stupider than these yes. people at church. Have, yep. Absolutely. I heard my dad talk about how yeah. stupid people are yep. at church. He's mm -hmm. like, I can't believe people are that stupid, mm -hmm. that gullible. Yeah. Yep. Now you That's have how judges the inmates talk about them. Looking at them and saying, Well, you're at risk. You need to go. Yeah. Go. These guys are laughing. No. They're laughing of at us. Of course they are. Um, you know, and our our last point here, our children are the ones and adult victims mm -hmm. who survived the abuse. They're the ones who suffer. Um, the work that the advocacy has done in the last several years is not only greatly hindered, I would say um, we're fighting such an uphill battle to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple things that happened this past week. I'm not really at liberty to talk about, but I contemplated leaving advocacy and just like, I was actually online looking at different jobs, to be honest. Um, I didn't know that. James. Yeah. Well, it's oh. uh, what usually when I do that, that's my way of, of processing and venting. Mm -hmm. I'm not really yeah. looking for a, another job. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, it's, it, just it's my way of coping really with the discouragement is. of our crappy justice right. system. It is disheartening to see all the wrong that is being done. And for every step that, advocacy makes forward there's 10 steps that shove yeah. it all the work backward yeah uh, i mean we fight so hard yes. to protect the innocent and the vulnerable and and it's uh, so many days it feels like an impossibility now i know that's not reality because there are different ways other than jail and prison and things like that there there are ways to protect people from slimy abusers. I um, think once, yeah. But if we're going to lean on the justice system, I'm, I'm, no. don't get your hopes up. No. Um, and it's one a thing very we flawed need to system. remember is the percentage of abusers that actually end up in prison is very small. The 
this old land is filled with abusers that will yeah. never make it into the court system. So um, yeah, the ma vast majority will never yeah, will make never it into make the court it. system. But this is it is very upsetting to think that now we're being spilled with more and more to the point of where I feel like it's it's an overabundance of evil. It's yeah. just so much evil surrounding our children. Well, give us a couple of tips, things that people can do, because, you know, we don't want this to be a, a depressing episode no, where, where we're like, well, not. you know, you're totally helpless. Um, what are some things that people can do right now, today? Number one is call your legislator. Be a voice that is that nagging voice, that voice that won't go away. Call every day. Make one phone call every day if you have to and voice your concerns about this. They do listen, believe it or not. Yeah. They do. Well, especially if you threaten the media. Uh, they don't uh, want the oh, media. They do not and, want that. And if a senator is no. aware and they're silent that this is going on. Right. That's not going to look good no, for them, and it, it should No, it will not. If you live in a city where we do, where we have prisons, go and ask the, you know, you, you have um, access to call the parole board. You have access mm -hmm. to call people in charge. Say, hey, what's going on? You know, what's the deal in our prison? I have concern for our community. You, We have the right to write letters to our editor. We have the right to voice our yeah. concerns. We can do those things. Um, if we know of a prisoner who has been released, it is our moral duty and responsibility to alert others around yeah. us. It, it, it and that's going to be a challenge to find out who they are, because this is all being done very right. secretively. Um, right. This is this is very hush hush. This is very quiet. These are backdoor deals that are going on right now. And some of these guys have been in prison for a good while and they've yeah. been, you know, you they know how to lay low they, too. Absolutely. They've learned, they've learned some skills while in prison, but they're not perfect, you know? And I think something we need to remember is we have the almighty God on our side. We truly do. Mm -hmm. I believe that with so, uh, so much with my whole heart, um, that if we just keep on the path, we keep focused, we keep doing our work, we can keep swimming and, and we will eventually, we will eventually come to head with this battle. This is just a new battle, another, you know, a big rock that's been thrown in the path. We can, we can um, get over it. Yeah, we truly can. But, but we need to be. We proactive. need to work together. We yeah. have to, and we have to be that voice that, that is heard. We have to yeah. speak out. We can't shrink back and say it's too big. It's too much. There's nothing I can do. There is something we can do. We yeah. must do it. Yeah, we must. Well, we'll leave you with this truth bomb. Uh, a wolf never changes. Remember that. Um, the wolf has one purpose in mind: to find the innocent sheep and destroy. Uh, don't fall for the lies of the wolf. And keep your guard up at all times. Just be aware. Uh, I, uh, it is fact that tens of thousands of inmates are being dumped into the streets as we speak. Um, that's not to be an alarmist. That's not to exaggerate. It's happening. That's it's fact. happening right, right. now. Right, Jim. So yeah. be on guard and uh, help protect your family, your neighbors. Uh, look out for these guys. And be on high alert. That's call your happens. legislators. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you for tuning in this episode and we'll catch you next round. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.